Good morning, this is John AE5X, and I want to make a quick video, hopefully under 10 minutes, showing uh, the difference and the benefit of the Tiny SA Ultra over the regular Tiny SA when used in the signal generator mode. I'm going to be making a uh, sensitivity check just by ear of my ICOM 705 and also of the new to me Index Labs QRP Plus. And in doing so, I also want to show, like I said, the main difference between the SA and the SA Ultra. Here's the original Tiny SA. And both of these will be used in the signal generator mode. Let me uh, put that in that mode now. And go to the minimum output. The weakest output from the Tiny SA is minus 76 dBm. That's only 3 dB less than S9 would be if you put it into a receiver directly. So it's a pretty strong signal. And uh, to make an MDS check of a receiver using the tiny SA here at minus 76 dBm, you would need a lot of external attenuation. And I've made a video on that. And you can see all the external attenuation I needed to use. It added a lot of clutter and interconnections to the setup. All right, so now let me show you the tiny SA Ultra. I'm already in signal generator mode. And as you can see, the level is minus 18.1 dBm, so let me reduce that to its lowest level, which is minus 123, a much weaker signal. I just received the Ultra back from a friend that I mailed it to, who was a, an engineer where I used to work. And he hooked the tiny SA Ultra, this one, up to a power meter, and found that down to minus 100 dBm, the output level is absolutely accurate with well, within 1 dB. Anything lower than that from minus 101 to minus 123, the deviation from what's um, labeled as the output on here and what the output actually is starts to deviate more than 1 dB um, up to 3 dB apart or dBm apart from what's labeled. So the point is that down to minus 100, though, it's pretty accurate. So I'm going to inject a signal of minus 100 dBm into my ICOM 705. And then I'm going to use the step attenuator. This is from Heck Kits. And I'm going to reduce the injected signal's level down to where I can no longer hear it. I'm not measuring the output, the audio output, with uh, a dB meter or anything like that. I'm just going to go by ear and hopefully the uh, microphone here on the smartphone will pick that up and you can hear what I'm hearing. All right, let me turn the uh, generator on. Okay, as you can hear, minus 100 dBm is still a pretty strong signal and um, I'm going to dial that down now with the attenuator starting with 20 dB. Okay, so right now I'm putting negative 120 dBm into the radio, and you can still hear that quite easily. We put in another 10, taking us to minus 130. And I can hear it. I hope the camera is picking that up. Let me toggle the tone on and off. Might make it easier to hear it. All right, that's uh, minus 136 now. I can still hear the tone. If that were a CW signal, I wouldn't be able to copy it, though. So what could I copy? Can I copy this one? Yes, I think I could. So that's minus 130 dBm going into the ICOM 705 and that's with a 500 hertz bandwidth and CW mode on 20 meters. So now I'm going to keep the identical setup but I'm going to replace the ICOM 705 with the QRP Plus which is about almost 30 years older than this radio. Let's see how it works. Let me turn the attenuation back off. 
and the signal generator output off and switch radios. Okay, I'm back and the QRP Plus from Index Labs is now connected in place of the 705. I've got minus 100 dBm on the signal generator available. Attenuators are all turned off so as soon as I turn on the output I'll be putting negative 100 dBm into the QRP Plus. Let's see how that sounds. Okay, now let me add 20 dB of attenuation. Still pretty easy to hear. 10 more. I can still hear it. Okay, the camera's picking that up again. That's 130, negative 130 dBm going into the uh, receiver. Back to 120, negative 120. Easy to hear. 126. Still pretty easy to hear. I think I could copy that. And I'm not doing this test to defend the receiver in the QRP Plus. I don't want anyone to think that's the point of this. But uh, just to show the lack of uh, extra components like fixed attenuation, you need to do a, a real MDS with uh, the Ultra as compared to the non-Ultra Tiny SA. And also that the sensitivity of the QRP Plus is I think pretty much equal to that of uh, any modern radio, including the ICOM 705, where the receiver fails with uh, with this transceiver is when multiple signals are present. Um, as uh, many people have written about, um, it doesn't deal very well with that. All the audio, all the uh, filtration regarding selectivity of this radio takes place at the audio level. So uh, that's. Uh, that's a big disadvantage. But anyway, I bought it. It's a fun radio to play with, and i um, not sure how long I'll keep it, but um, I do like having it for now. The price was right. So uh, anyway, that's how you can measure a receiver that you may build from a kit if you want to compare it with something, a known standard, like a commercial radio with a known MDS. Uh, this is an easy way to do it without a lot of clutter using the, um, the Ultra, Tiny SA Ultra, as opposed to... The original tiny SA. And to be honest with you, I use this piece of test equipment right here more as a signal generator than a spectrum analyzer. Anyway, 73, thanks for watching.